I am not a liar. I have killed thousands. I have fed more drug fiends than the top three pharmaceutical companies combined. I have stolen children from parents, wives from husbands, wiped out entire generations. But lying, that I have never done. The rest are offenses against humanity. Lying is an offense against yourself. I am the head of the Santa Blanca organization, which you call a cartel. I had a dream. I dreamed of a land where we could grow our own coca, produce our own cocaine, where we could run our business free from interference from the police, the government, the army, the Yankees. In my dream, a woman's voice asked me, Sueño, mijo, what if you had your own country? Like Moses, I led my people to the promised land, Bolivia. We came here, we bought the coca fields. What we couldn't buy, we took. We bought the police, the military, the judges, the politicians. We were on the verge of becoming the government itself on the razor's edge from fulfilling my dream. Of creating a narco state. The nation of Santa Blanca. Crude explosive detonated outside the U.S. Embassy in La Paz, Bolivia. Two Marine Embassy guards were injured in the blast. Two days later, a CIA asset in central Bolivia provided us with these images. Our analysts have identified the individual in the photo as DEA Special Agent Ricardo Ricky Sandoval, my friend. Sandoval has had spent the last six years investigating the local cocaine industry. Our understanding is that Sandoval was the intended target of the bombing. What the embassy bomb did not accomplish was completed up close and personal. Sandoval was captured, tortured, and killed. Then his body was dumped. We have yet to recover it. Our target, the group responsible for the embassy bombing and the death of Special Agent Sandoval, is the drug trafficking organization commonly known as the Santa Blanca Cartel. Yesterday, they were just narcos. Today, they're narco-terrorists. Initially, the Bolivian government resisted the Mexican cartel. They formed UNIDAD, a Bolivian special forces unit. It didn't go as planned. Thousands of bodies later, politicians, police officers, and journalists have become an endangered species. The Bolivian government has imploded on itself. With no other options, the new president made a deal with Santa Blanca. You stop killing our people, we'll look the other way. Since then, Santa Blanca has turned Bolivia into the nexus of the South American drug trade. With their friends in Mexico, they also have a clear pipeline to the US and Canada. The only way to stop Santa Blanca for good is to completely dismantle them, piece by piece. The cartel is organized into four operations. Production, smuggling, security, and influence. At the top of it all is El Jefe de los Jefes, Boss of bosses, El Sueño. Hello ladies and gentlemen, dn 7 here and I welcome you to my Ghost Recon Wildlands Realistic Let's Play. So the game has been out for a week or so and while I initially planned to start the series on release day, looking back at things I don't mind that I got a bit delayed. A new patch has been released from Ubisoft which apparently fixed a lot of issues and also improved the performance and stability of the game. And Nvidia also released a new driver with optimizations for the game which should also improve the performance and stability. Now as for the series itself, well uh, if you have seen my Mass Effect videos you might know that I tend to focus on storyline, lore and realistic gameplay. And it will be the same with Ghost Recon Wildlands as well, but obviously the focus will be on the gameplay in this case, as I don't think there will be as much story and lore as in the Mass Effect for example. 
And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there isn't any story or such, because there is and it uh, actually seems a lot of fun, it's just that this is the kind of game where the gameplay will be the focus, or should be the focus. And the game does look very promising on the, you know, tactical shooter side. It's uh, complex enough to be believable, but it's not overly complicated, so it seems well balanced, which is a good thing. And there are also some interesting squad mechanics and gadgets in the game, which I'm planning to use a lot. So what you can expect is uh, what I call realistic and believable squad-based gameplay, first of all. But I will also show you all the cutscenes and intel entries and etc. So you can get a better understanding of the game world. But back to the technical side, well, um, the game is brutally demanding on ultra settings. It does seem to be quite well optimized up to very high settings, but turning it up to ultra will massively drop your frame rates. I did a bit of testing and it seems I will be unable to maintain constant 60 frames per second on ultra, while very high is a bit overkill as I average around uh, 100 frames per second, so I decided to go with a custom setting which is somewhere between the two. So it's basically very high settings with uh, some additional effects turned on or higher, such as um, texture quality on ultra, anisotropic filtering on 16, turf effects are turned on, and god rays are on enhanced. Now with these settings I average around uh, 80 to 90 frames per second and it never drops under 60 while delivering a very very nice almost ultra-like quality. And I guess that's more than enough for the introduction guys, we might as well start the game with the character creation. Ok, now initially I was expecting something similar to what we've got in the division, but the character creation in Wildlands is actually a lot more detailed as you will see. Also, like I said, I try to play in a realistic and believable way, and I will try to reflect this on my character or the character creation as well. So let's get started. Now the idea here is to create a realistic and believable character, but also to add a bit of badassness to it. Let's see if uh, it will work out. Now I'll be honest with you guys, I've pretty much already created my character on a different profile, because I simply tend to spend way too much time with it, so I already know what I want to achieve here. This is more about showing some of the options for those who are interested. But for the beard, well, I've been thinking a bit about this, which uh, might sound funny actually, so let me explain it. We are going to be part of a covert operation during the game, so ideally we will never be identified or recognized. But let's say something goes wrong and you know we have to leave Bolivia, and we want to change our appearance so we won't get recognized. Well, one of the easiest ways to achieve a drastic change is to shave. That is, if we have a beard to shave, of course. So uh, yes, let's go with the lumberjack style here, and hopefully we will have a razor with us all the time. And as you can see, there are plenty of options to customize your character.
The headset is where I go a bit against realism. I guess the only realistic option would be the earpiece, but I really like the headset style, so I will actually choose one of those here. Now the backpack is again one of those things I like to keep realistic, so to say. So uh, since we are going to have a drone, which I plan to use quite often, uh, yes, I'm definitely going to pick the drone backpack here. And this should be it, guys. Now, there are a couple of options here, such as uh, special outfits and such, but I'm not really interested in them, to be honest. So, yeah, that's it for them. But that's more than enough for the character customization part, so let's get started, guys. So, uh, gender and physical traits cannot be changed after this step. Now, does this mean that we can change accessories and such later on? Well, that would be cool, we'll have to see. Now, for the difficulty setting, initially I was planning to go with the extreme setting. But then, you know, this is a solo play after all, and I will have to rely on my squad mates, which are AI controlled. And well, to be honest, they aren't exactly the brightest. So let's just say I want to avoid it uh, becoming a frustrating experience. Regular should be fine though. As you can see, normal mode for most players. Enemies can compete with elite soldiers, which is uh, good enough, I guess. So let's get started. I was 
the rookie field officer in Moscow when the coup went down? There was talk you were involved? Nah, must have been someone else. We were never there. It's not every day you get to meet an urban legend in the flesh. Huh, you should tell that to my kid. Maybe he'd listen when I tell him to take the trash out. Is it hard being someone who doesn't officially exist? You tell me, Karen Bowman. International aid worker. I'm sure you've seen the horrible, fucked up shit humans are capable of when there are zero repercussions. But let me tell you right now. No matter how you compartmentalize, how you desensitize, you can't prepare for elsewhere you. that reads pretty close to delusional. He's taken down the poverty, chastity. If he's not in it for the chocha or the money, he's in it for the power. This joint task force is CIA, DEA, JSOC. I'm your resident spook for this ride. Welcome to Operation Kingslayer. Our briefing said there'd be a contention of locals. The guitar is 26. They're a group of rebels who've been giving Unidad and Santa Blanca some resistance. We'll meet their leader, Pakatari, as soon as we touch down. Bolivians have a long history of hating us Yankees, but this time, let's hope the enemy of my enemy will be my friend. But don't turn your back on him. I'm not going to. Soldiers. This is the help you promised? That Sandoval promised? A single Yankee died, so you send a handful of soldiers. Hundreds of Bolivians have died from Santa Blanca's bullets. Where will my hundreds of soldiers come from? As Americans, we aren't here, remember? These soldiers are the best covert ops team our country has to offer. With their help, you won't need hundreds of soldiers. Are you familiar with the word Huber, Senora Bowman? Meet Pakatari, leader of the resistance group Kataris 26. We will be working with the rebels to destabilize Santa Blanca's organization. They've been fighting Santa Blanca and corrupt Bolivian officials for nearly six years now. We'll need to coordinate targets. There is no time for this. We have information on Amaru's whereabouts. Amaru? You found him? Amaru is one of the founders of the Kataris 26. More than that, her group is founded on his ideas. Without his theories of an agrarian proletariat, there would be no organized resistance against Santa Blanca and the corruption in our government. Amaru must be saved. If you were to assist my people, it would do much to earn my confidence. Where is he? We do not know exactly. We know he's in this province and that there is a Santa Blanca lieutenant who knows where he is. I'll put a call into the activity, see if they can dig more intel out of the airwaves. Start looking for that lieutenant and keep me informed of everything via sap phone. Good hunting. Saving Amaru is important to our cause, Yankee. Make sure you don't kill the Santa Blanca lieutenant before you get the chance to ask him questions. Alright guys, so here we are in Bolivia, and as you can see we can start our work right away. We will have to rescue Amaru, who seems to be a crucial part of the resistance, but that's going to be the next episode guys. Sorry for the slower start, uh, don't worry, we should get right into the action in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.